All right. We are in the meantime with me and Dave. WrestleMania edition. That's right. WrestleMania edition. I'm here. How do I turn this down, Mike? Through the volume on this thing? All right, here. A little down here, downy, downy. I am here at uh, my buddy Mike's house. Uh, we are we're, we are watching. We are engaging in a practice uh, that many a single thirty-year-old, twenty-year-old, teen, and single-digit male males tend to. And I stress single. Uh, we're engaging in an activity that most males our age who are again single, single. Uh, we are watching WrestleMania. Today is WrestleMania. This is, uh, what, what's the day today? March or April? April uh, 6th. April 6th, it's a, it's a historic WrestleMania. We just finished watching The Undertaker's 20, 22, he had 21 years of victories at WrestleMania. Watched his streak ended by Brock Lesnar. He just lost. We, you, Mike, my friend Mike and I are heartbroken, as you can tell. Um, we're now currently watching. Some of you melted down. What was that? Speak up. Some of you melted down. Some, some. We watched faces of, of young men all over the arena, just in in agony. They, it just it's un, unfathomable how the Undertaker, a uh, a, a grown mortal man who portrays himself as death, uh, could lose a wrestling match. Apparently, the powers of the supernatural did not. Uh, apply to WrestleMania 30. WrestleMania is now 30 years old. WrestleMania, something that we started watching in our single digits, is now old enough to know better than to really be wrestling anymore. We, sh if we should have grown up by now, but we haven't. Uh, idiocracy is alive and well and living in America as well as the world, and we are watching this spectacle. Currently, we are watching the Divas Battle Royal. Which is uh, the women. When everybody at WrestleMania goes to the bathroom. This is where everybody, that's Mike knows. Mike's, Mike, my friend Mike over here, who's off in the distance, he's going he's gonna to be saying things. You may not understand what he's saying all the time. He, uh, he, he's he's uh, uh, what is known as a classic curmudgeon. But my friend Mike here, I've grown up with Mike. I've known him since junior high, since we started watching wrestling at a certain point. And... Um, since then, uh, we we've gone and uh, we've grown up. Uh, we have gotten in trouble together. Mike and I have, have uh, you know we, we you know do what young men do. We got you know did did what young men do, get in trouble. Uh, you know we both were beer drinkers. He's still a beer drinker. I'm not. Um, we uh, we you know we do whatever. But we've gone in, in certain paths where uh, now today Mike uh, is a retired. Or I, I want to say retired Mike used to be uh, a local wrestler from Big Time Wrestling out of uh, Hayward. Uh, he was Newark. a, a Newark Hayward. I mean, it's the same. It's all the school was in Hayward. He's the, the, the Big Time Wrestling used to have events in Newark Pavilion. But Mike was a local superstar known as Shooter Silva. Shooter Mike Silva. You can look him up on the Big Time Wrestling website if you so choose. As you can see, Mike is very... Uh, uh, He's, he has he oozes charisma. Uh, we we've been sitting here uh, watching WrestleMania. We've uh, you know it's been a good one this year, right? Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. And um, we, uh, we 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 Mike is also a uh, an accomplished chef. Uh, let's see. He he cooked today. What was it? What did we cook today? Carne asada. Carne asada tacos or burrito, whatever it really. I mean, it was tortillas, carne asada, and all that. Um, so he, he really enjoys make, making making uh, food. He also enjoys making beer. He's been brewing uh, beer, right? I helped. He helped brew, brew beer with our good friend Richard Barr. Um, we're also we're on the precipice of our third or twenty year high school reunion, which will be coming up soon. So Mike and I, uh, again, thirty seven. I'm thirty seven. He's thirty eight, respectively. Uh, we're watching WrestleMania. And a month away is our is our twenty high, year high school reunion. We really need to grow the fuck up. That's that's I think the bottom line here. I heard here. it's overrated. Uh, I heard it's overrated. He's a, whatever. Mike's a homeowner. We're in his home. He, you know, and I'm not. You know, that's, don't make any stupid joke. You know, homeowner, whatever. Duh. It, homeowner. He owns his own home. 
He's uh, he's also again he he has a, a successful job. Uh, that's the reason why he had to leave wrestling actually because unlike most people say, well wrestling's fake, wrestling's fake. Wrestling is not fake. It's uh, fixed. It's, it's fixed, as Mike was saying. It uh, it hurts. Wrestling hurts. We're watching all these young ladies right now, very attractive, most of them, uh, beating the crap out of each other. Which actually, I think it's quite quite a quite an attractive quality in a woman. Um, you know, it's 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 one thing when when men beat up women, but when women beat up women, it's okay. You know, we we enjoy it very much, especially when they do so in a very stylish fashion. Right here, yeah, it's sexy. That's what we were just pointing out. So we're about we're this match will be over here soon. Um, one of the the, the divas champions going to win her or some new diva champion or whatever. Wow, she looks pretty good doing that move. Um, and then we're going to be on to the main event, which uh, this year will looks like it'll be uh, this guy Daniel Bryan, uh, who won, he Daniel Bryan who is a current favorite right now. Everybody goes they do this yes shit. Uh, he won the first match against Triple H. Uh, another wrestler. If you follow wrestling, just you know, and if you don't, you can look this shit up. That's what Google's for. Um, but yeah, tri he beat Triple H in a with a stipulation that whoever won that match is going to be in the main event at the end of the mat of the WrestleMania uh, in a triple threat match with Randy Orton, son of Cowboy Bob Orton, who I used to watch and Mike used to watch when we were children. Now, Randy Orton, his son, who is probably about 10 years younger than us, am I correct? Randy Orton, about there. He is now going to wrestle in the main event against uh, another wrestler named Batista, who, as Mike says, what is Batista? All the buses? No, no. There's a term that you refer to with wrestlers uh, of, of Batista's prowess. Mike shits? refers, thank you, Mike refers to, the, to certain wrestlers as the shits. Uh, Batista fits into that category of the shits. Um, and then, and Daniel Bryan, who has supposedly is either realistically has an injured shoulder or is faking an injured shoulder, he will be wrestling in this triple threat match. And uh, Mike, we, we're pretty sure Daniel Bryan will be winning the championship. If all of these these winning and losing, they really go with the with the gut of the crowd. And every now and then, they go against the grain of the crowd. But really, who uh, whoever is the term is over. Uh, which means that you are over with the crowd. You have the crowd by the balls. They love you or they hate you, one of the two. But if you have the entire crowd uh, uh, basically paying attention to you is what it seems like, uh, with positive or negative energy that you are consciously creating, you are therefore you are over. Well, Daniel Bryan right now is the guy who is over with everybody in this audience. And uh, so chances are pretty good he'll win the heavyweight championship tonight. Don't you think, Mike? Same possibility. All right, good. See, excellent guest I have here for the WrestleMania edition. Reason why I also am, the, the, the reason why, again, I'm, I'm here, I am broke. I can't afford WrestleMania like I stated. Mike has a good job, and he can afford WrestleMania. Uh, he's ordered WrestleMania and cooked some food and invited his good friend Dave over to enjoy WrestleMania. And this, this is something we did. Uh, we weren't able to do this last year or the year before because... Uh, there was something wrong with the ordering plan. So imagine if you did uh, try to watch. You were getting ready to enjoy WrestleMania as we are today. Holy shit, it's Mr. T. And all of a sudden, holy shit, it's Mr. T. That's what he said. you got to speak up, man. The audience has to hear you. you know, holy man? shit, it's Mr. T. It's Mr. T. Mr. T. They're, right now, they're having a bunch of old wrestlers. Uh, you know what? You really should be watching. We can't really be talking too much about what's going on on the television set because Vince McMahon will find us, hunt us down, and kill us for even doing anything. The fact that I even put WrestleMania edition, I might get contacted by the WWE. By the way, I had to use color color in this one because Mike doesn't have a black Sharpie, but he has a coloring kit of big markets. So just want to let you guys know. Dude, I lost all the other ones. You don't need don't need to make excuses, man. It's like it's fine. It works. It's it's good. We're good. But yeah, and uh and in my I didn't you know think to muster up a guest this week for my new this, I coined the phrase TubeCast. This is a YouTube podcast. There's no pods here, so it's, I'm calling it a TubeCast. Wow, Harley Race is still alive? Yeah. Wow. Handsome Harley Race is still alive. Bob Backlund, I knew was alive. Uh, Bob Backlund, who apparently he's picking shit out of his teeth with his tongue. Dusty Rhodes looks like shit. Uh, Dusty Rhodes looks like a corpse that The Undertaker... Bret Hart looks like a handsome older gentleman. And you I got, 
I put together a vaporizer for that guy. You put together a vaporizer for this guy. You remember? This is also could be considered what is known in the wrestling world as a shoot. Um, uh, in in wrestling, what is a shoot, Mike? Please explain that to the uh, meantime audience. Legit. No, talk 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 louder. You gotta okay. be loud. Legit. Le- it's legit. That doesn't really explain. In a few more, a little more elaborate, if you will, what a shoot is. Please. There's a shoot and a work. Okay, a shoot and a work. He's just he's he's gonna he's made a few words. Okay, this took a lot of lumps to the head. A shoot is uh, when a lot of times when they do these inner when you, you look it up on YouTube, put a wrestler's name in and put shoot after that. You will see interviews with wrestlers where they're talking about I guess legitimate truth. It's I guess when when they're they're not on the clock uh, as wrestlers. They're not, you know, like right now, I'm on the clock. I'm Right now, this is what I would call a mean day of work because I'm in character somewhat uh, uh, doing this for you. But if I were not being mean Dave, if I was my, my regular it's self, it's, it's a shoot. Okay, Mike is currently legitimately Mike right now. He is no longer <laughs> Shooter Silva. So this is a shoot of sorts. But I'm not really interviewing Mike because, you, as you can see, he clearly does, does not want to, you know, he's, he's, he's relaxing. The guy, you know, he's just, he's just chilling. This is his house. And I'm, I'm just glad to be watching WrestleMania for very little cost. Um, I basically just had to placate him with some, uh, some free weed I got from uh, before I, I uh, stopped smoking weed. So, you know, hey, say la vie. But, um, again, it's WrestleMania Sunday. We're now watching the intro and a horrible band that is introducing Randy Orton to the ring. Uh, a lot of flat. Here's the thing about wrestling. Uh, Mike, again, was Shooter Silva. He held, you were part of the te- BTW Tag Team Champions, am I correct? That's right. So you, he held the belt at one point. If Mike had been able to, to keep doing this, because you started when you were, what, 30? 28. 28. And, uh... Mike is somebody that, uh, let's say, as you can tell, man a few words, a little bit of an introvert, um, you know, uh, shy unless he's around his friends, and his favorite pastime is really repeating popular lines from movies that we've all seen over and over and over again. Like earlier, you were repeating lines from the movie Idiocracy. I was, re- I was referring to WrestleMania as Monday Night Rehabilitation, which for anybody who's seen Idiocracy, you can tell. And uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin came out to the ring, and I said, oh, look, it's Beef Supreme out of retirement. Mike then proceeds to tell me lines, say lines, for, with, like water, like out of the toilet and shit like that. Watch Idiocracy, great movie, Mike Judge rules. Um, Mike and I grew up, uh, again, in Newark. One of the things that we both uh, kind of were bonded over was, strangely enough, stand-up comedy. We both were fans of uh, Andrew Dice Clay at the time. Sam Kinison. Uh, one of the li- one of the epi- uh, one of the, my favorite specials that I, I went back and watched on YouTube, uh, and one of the one of the comics who probably had a bigger influence on me than I realized uh, is Dennis Miller, and this is old Dennis Miller before he became the the neo fascist that he is today, uh, pushing Fox News mentality, wanting to demonize all Middle Easterners uh, because you know he's just he's scared he's gonna get have a plane flown into him or some shit, but Dennis Miller. He, uh, before 9-11, and after, he's still, he's still a very funny guy. He's very shrewd, very smart, uh, comedian with a very sarcastic wit. And, um, and, and I guess esoteric might be a word you throw in there. I don't know what the meaning of esoteric exactly is. But, uh, he had a, uh, uh, quite a jumbled career in stand-up con- or, or in just entertainment. But before all that, he was a stand-up comedian. Most known for his, uh, Saturday Night Live, um, career. Uh, where he was, oh, we've got one of the dogs joining us here. This is Godzilla. For those of you who don't know, Godzilla is is, is a dog, so welcome, Godzilla. Um, Dennis Miller had a special on HBO, uh, black and white, at the time, at the height of his uh, Saturday Night Live career, where he was doing stand-up. We didn't really know he did stand-up comedy, so we're watching, uh, uh, this, this special black and white was very, very funny to us, Mike and I. Repeated those lines over and over and over again to each other, uh, not even knowing really, understanding what the jokes meant. Sometimes it was really like we were just you know repeating. I, I, I watched it and I was I still don't understand half of what he's talking about, but the way he delivers things as if basically talking to the audience 
you know, and delivering jokes about, you know, what are you guys, stupid, that kind of, you know, but not in a, it's not Ron White type of stupid. Ron White's actually stupid. Dennis Miller, uh, even even in neo-fascist terms today, is still a very smart guy. He knows how to talk shit to those that he really does not like uh, properly with intelligence. Right now, uh, what's not intelligent, Batista, his uh, entrance now into the ring, we're watching Dave Batista. He's all... My favorite thing Dave Bautista has done, as, uh, not as a wrestler, but as an actor, he plays the bronze man in The Man with the Iron Fist, which was probably a better wrestling match than anything he's done in his career in wrestling. Well, he, didn't get, he didn't get hurt in the movie. Speak up. Uh, he didn't get hurt in the movie, he, Mike he was didn't pull, He didn't pull a muscle. I'm, Mike's a very soft-spoken guy, so I'm going to make sure you understand. He didn't pull a muscle during the filming of that movie. I, I beg to differ. So... Um, what else we got here? Daniel Bryan now is entering the ring. And Daniel Bryan, this is his second match of the night. I don't really want to be a commentator to wrestling. I want to ask Mike some questions here. Because uh, he is my guest. I'm just trying to trick him into not thinking he's a guest over here. So, you know, just bear with me. Um, Mike uh, wrestled, yes, started uh, 20... The thing about Mike, again, he was a skater when we were younger, uh, kind of went into independent study in high school, was kind of grew out of high school. Uh, Mike, I always thought, was going to go into bong making or so, of some kind because he always had a fascination with making bongs in high school, as people tend to do. But he, uh, instead, Mike, uh, he, was, he was what is known as uh, not, uh, 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 not very interested in school. Okay, I'll put it that way. I, myself, was a straight-A student. This is proof that it doesn't matter what your edu how well you do in school, it's how you use it. Because Mike, graduating with his, did you get a GED or did you get a diploma? Got a diploma. He got a diploma. Doing the bare minimum, mind you. Pretty much. But he, uh, he knew, early on, he knew that he had to get a solid job and foundation at that job uh, to basically uh, just succeed in life. So his goal after working at a Nordstrom distribution place, right? He worked at, yeah, yeah. Pretty, unpacking trucks or something. I'm like narrating his fucking life because he ain't going to do it. I'm nice. telling you. Uh, he then, he made a conscious decision. I want to work for the phone company uh, being one of the pole climbers. No pun, no, no euphemism, no nothing. I mean, he actually climbs a, a tall pole and does all that shit that you, you know, whatever. And, um, and he got one of those jobs. And to this day, he, that's what he does. And that job does require a physical amount of work. So uh, when Mike, at the age of 28, uh, for some reason or another, we went to some matches. He, Mike developed a, a fascination with wrestling out of the blue because, like most of us who have older brothers, I don't have an older brother, but uh, Mike has an older brother who's pretty much much older. Mike looks up to his older brother, even if he doesn't want to admit it. And whatever his older brother thinks is cool, Mike thinks is cool. Okay, even when they, they butt heads and whatever. Mike was the guy who introduced me to his brother, and his brother was the guy who introduced me to heavy metal, uh, you know, giving me all these tapes and all that stuff. So he was the guy who also introduced me to a lot of stuff that I would, if I wanted to hold a grudge, I would say ruined my life today. But I don't. I say he blessed my life, because I really love metal. I'm, this is my friend's band, Disaster. You know, I wouldn't have been a Disaster fan if it wasn't for Mike's older brother. Um, also, we were skaters at that time, all that other shit. Well... Again, we're in our 20s now, and out of the blue, Mike starts becoming a wrestling fan. Uh, this happened, what was it, roughly around 98, 99, somewhere around there? Yeah, and, and I'm saying, we were wrestling fans when we were kids, but we got out of it because it started getting real childish. Right around 97, that's when they started getting a little more hardcore again. And wrestlers, uh, ECW was created, but we didn't know about any of that shit. Uh, it was the Monday Night Wars. That was the beginning of all that with D WCW and uh, WWF at that time, which became WWE. You can do all this research on your fucking own. I'm not going to tell you all that. But Mike started watching wrestling again. And when I would hang out with Mike, I would be, why are we watching wrestling? This is, you know, this is, you know, gay for kids. All the, all the things that young men who are insecure and, and just, you know, be getting high together, just, you know, we talk shit. And uh, I went from being somebody who would talk shit about every Monday that I would come over watch, and he's watching wrestling. I went from that to at some point I remember walking in and going, oh, Jericho's back. Chris Jericho. I, I was a wrestling fan again and didn't know it. Uh, just sort of, if you can't beat him, join him. And, um, and here I am, 37, watching WrestleMania 30 with Mike, watching the main event. 
uh, yeah, this, this is where we're at. So, uh, at that, yeah, it is. At that time, uh, I've been a musician for over uh, 20 plus years playing music live and all. I had a creative expression or a way to express myself out of all the frustrations of work. Uh, a way to carry out my impotence in life by making loud noise and annoying uh, strangers with my, my noise and finding some scenes where it belonged, uh, where my a lot of my drugs and alcohol kind of cultivated. Uh, well, Mike didn't have any of that. Mike was somebody who would do his job, go home, get high, go to sleep, okay? Uh, and not, you know, when I say get high, you just smoke weed. That's really medicine these days. It's, he would medicate. Um, and so... Now, uh, I, or let's look, what year was it? It was right around 2002, 2003. I had moved out of my folks' house. And uh, we, Mike hit me up about going to check out a match at our local Newark Pavilion Big Time Wrestling. Uh, and I was just intrigued because I love do-it-yourself entertainment, uh, being from, you know, playing, playing in bands and bars and all kinds of divey places. I wanted to see what a divey wrestling match would look like. So Mike and I, uh, we went with our friend Lee Froman. Uh, I remember we saw Chris Candido, I believe that night. Was that the first one? Yep. We saw Chris Candido, R.I.P., uh, from from uh, ECW, uh, and he. Uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, we had a lot of fun just uh, going there. And Mike, I guess, got uh, a bug in his in, up his up his uh, up his brain uh, because a, about a year later, Mike. I, we were going, we would go to these matches, but a year later, I went to a match and Mike said, oh, I can't, I'm not going to be hanging out, I'm working security, which I thought was really weird, because Mike already has a job. Why would Mike work security at a wrestling event? And then as, as my very naive gears started turning, um, because Mike would always be talking about Kirk, who is the promoter of uh, Big Time Wrestling, he would be referring to these people by a first name basis. And I don't know these people, and I'm thinking it's kind of weird, but, you know, I, again, I was smoking a lot of weed at the time. So uh, it occurred to me, and I walked up to Mike as he was working. So I said, Mike, are you, are you becoming a wrestler? And Mike's exact words were, maybe. And, uh, and the fact was, when I found that out, I was thrilled for Mike here because I knew one of two things. Either he was going to, or, uh, or one of three, I should say. Either he was going to finally... Uh, be, be become more popular with the ladies, which he's always been, but he's, again, he's a shy dude. Uh, he's going to become more popular, popular with the ladies and get laid more often than he has. Uh, he was going to discover that he was gay, or both. <laughs> That's what, uh, that was what Dave Grimes said. <laughs> both. So, you know, because you can be gay and get laid a lot. Because gay dudes get laid a lot, too. You see what I'm saying? So, that's what I told you. I remember telling you that. So don't get upset. You know, don't, you know this is a shoot, Mike. Um, so, Mike ended up becoming a wrestler, uh, he, he's not gay, but I mean, it's, if he were, it'd be fine, we have gay friends, so it's, you know, all above board, um, but, uh, but he ended up, uh, uh, having, the thing about Mike, uh, becoming a wrestler, uh, it was really cool to watch somebody who was a, you know, for a wrestler, it's, you're pretty old to be starting at 28, a lot of wrestlers start when they're very young. Uh, and if they take to it, they usually they have a limited lifespan of wrestling to do something with it because it takes a lot out on your body unless you're going to be a manager or you're going to be a, uh, uh, a referee. Um, so Mike ended up, uh, uh, you know, he did this wrestling thing and he started having his early matches. And Mike looked better doing wrestling than a lot of these guys who had been in there doing it for quite a while. And he was very new. And uh, he became a local favorite because he is from Newark. And this, you know, uh, promotion operated out of Newark. And it's also, we have a huge Portuguese population in Newark. So Mike, who is, is part Portuguese, who doesn't have the most Portuguese last name or whatever. He, uh, hey, what's up? Yeah, you're running the shop. This is the other dog. What's this dog's name? Hoover. Hoover. This is Hoover right here. Uh, I don't know if you can't see. Yeah, you're off camera right now, but just relax. The... Mike ended up uh, uh, becoming a hometown favorite and uh, went by the name Shooter Silva. Uh, Silva. Very Portuguese. So, became a favorite. It's my grandmother's maiden name. It's his, it's his grandmother's maiden name, too. So, you know, as, as he's pointing out. Um, so, 
from there, Mike, uh, uh, yeah, he, he wrestled quite a bit. He had a tag team partner, uh, Kimo. Yep. Kimo Cam Camaloa? Canaloa. Canaloa. Kimo Canaloa. Uh, and they became, what was the tag team name? Shoot to Thrill. Shoot to Thrill, which at the time I had a band called Bad Touch, uh, and we actually wrote a song for them that was uh, uh, called, uh, I'm, it wasn't Shoot to Thrill. It was? It, no, it wasn't. Uh, it was, that was the, it was called Happy Ending. <laughs> it was... It was, was called, it was the finishing move was the happy ending, which really for wrestling, kind of, kind of a funny name. So exactly. we, we named their, their, we named the song, uh, happy ending, but we were young cause shoot the thrill was also a ACDC song. So why name your song through shoot the thrill? I wrote a song. We wrote, we also had a song called blackout, uh, that then as my friends pointed out, the Scorpions had a popular song yep. called blackout. So we renamed the song another blackout. Uh, which was about all the blackouts I had when I was drinking. That's another story for another time. This is about Mike here. And, uh, but yeah, Shoot the Throw was the tag team. They won tag team championships. Mike became very, very good in the ring. Um, and if he had been able to continue, probably could have, have been one of the guys uh, that won the Cruiserweight Championship at one point. Or, uh, dare I say, Mike could have... Uh, on, in wrestling, there's always guys, when, the, when they travel... Uh, with their their traveling show, WWE, uh, it, it's strange. When you go into wrestling, you're not that even at the bottom. You're not that far. It's a very carny. It's a carny art. Okay, this is from carnival sideshows that this shit originated. So the bottom is not that far from the top, and it's just a huge pay scale difference. But um, they they look for talent at the bottom at all times. And a lot of guys, it's the independent circuit. If you want to watch the movie The Wrestler with Mickey Rourke, you can learn a little about it. Um, but Mike, being when he, even when he was starting, uh, if he had continued, or even if he started young, there was a chance, yeah, Mike could have been one of these guys that not only could be a jobber or a, a, a plant on a, on, a, on a WWE Raw or something, where he's one of the guys where the wrestler... He picks on an audience member, and that audience member gets taken out of the audience, and they beat the crap out of him. That's usually a plant. That's a wrestler from around that area. Uh, they, a plant. They're planted in the audience. He could have been one of those guys. Uh, he could have been. He's he's friends with a lot of guys who have been those guys on programs before, and he's wrestled. He. Well, I don't know if you've read. You didn't. Did you wrestle any superstars? No. No. He just wrestled the local guys, but. Mike also got got to basically be on the undercard, the opening matches, for uh, all of his goddamn heroes, or has gotten to meet all of his heroes in wrestling, or most of them, most of the the biggest influences. I met Roddy Piper. He, was cool. he, he met Rowdy Roddy Piper. He was cool. Honky Tonk Man. Honky Tonk Man. Well, no, I mean I'm talking more about the guys. Sabu, uh, one of the coolest dudes in wrestling. Yeah. Uh, if you look up ECW, he is uh, one of the guys. Genocidal, homicidal, suicidal Sabu beats the crap out of himself in wrestling. Uh, table ladders, chairs, matches, that kind of thing. He got to uh, he got to hang out with him and partake in in the the uh, medicinal properties of uh, medicinal purposes that you can figure out with Sabu. And Sabu, according to Mike, in the circle of passing said bowl around. Uh, when it was going to Sabu, what, were, what did Sabu say? I remember you told me this. Come on. He Sabu said, uh, "Give it to him. He needs it more." And and meaning that Mike hurt Mike. He knew Mike was hurting, so Mike he gave he gave the. Uh, you remember that? You don't even remember that, do you? You're too high. So anyway, he says it hurts the memory. Uh, he also got to meet Rob Van Dam. Really cool wrestler who I also got to meet. Uh, it's it's been really cool. Looking at the uh, heavy or looking at the main event right now, uh, we got about a half hour left of WrestleMania. Um, this one is is they're, they're, they look like it's prime for Daniel Bryan. They're beating the crap out of Daniel Bryan. He's dodging every every like Batista just did a spear at him and went into the tournament. Batista sucks. I mean he could beat the crap out of all of us e easily, but it wouldn't look very good. Yeah. You know. Um, one of the coolest things too, Mike worked with a referee at Big Time Wrestling, who 
uh, has gone on, who is in WrestleMania today? Please. Mark Harris. Mark Harris, aka Ronnie Washington, from when we were uh, at, when watching him over at BTW. Uh, he was refereeing the uh, Forty Man Tag, the, the Andre the Giant Tribute Battle Royal. Yeah. Uh, all right, looks like looks like Daniel Bryan's gonna gonna win this one. Everybody's going ape shit and they're showing their yes signs. Everybody's yeah. carrying these yes we, we signs. Got some, we got some time, man. Oh really? Oh, we got some time. Okay, so we got they still got to sell another half hour of this of WrestleMania, so. We'll see how it goes. So Mike ended up becoming a wrestler. I thought that was really cool. Um, again, limited career though. Not very good on the microphone for doing the talking shit. I don't know why. You know, I, I it, the guy oozes charisma. Can't you tell? I mean, he's just dying to dying to talk. But uh, in the in the process again, of, uh, you know, took a lot of injuries, took a lot of bumps, as they call them. You've taken a chair to the head, correct? Yes, I have. Yes, he's been taking. He's taking the chair to the head. Uh, I asked him. I said, "Is do they? Is there any technique to take taking taking the chair to the head? Is there? Nope. No. You just it hurts. So it's real. When they when they get hit on the head, it feels like I get hit in the head with a with steel, a, steel chair. You, yeah, you get hit with the in the head with a chair, steel chair. Um, Michael, you took went to the back too, I believe, right? Yes, I did. Yes, you took a chair to the back, and what did it feel like? It felt like I hit, got hit with a steel chair to the back. So it, it it's it hurts. Um, he also, uh, what are some of the other cool things? Uh, I remember he told me that, uh, Jeff Hardy, a uh, great wrestler that, you know, a very high-flying injury, carries a pharmacy with him. Uh, not too long after that, uh, Jeff Hardy was arrested in his own home for having that pharmacy. Um, what else was cool about this? Uh, Mike, Mike got to meet, uh, a wrestler who is, well known, and became even more well known for something very, very uh, something uh, you don't want to be well known for: murder, murder suicide in particular. Mike got to meet the 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 w rabid Wolverine, the Grippler, Chris Benoit, and uh, and it was very troubling for him to find out that Chris Benoit uh, murdered his family and killed himself because, as Mike said, what. He was a pretty cool dude. He was a cool dude. Okay. So, it could happen to any of us. All right? We could all go home tonight and... Brennan, and, 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 you know, hindsight, not so much now. Yeah, he had... Something was wrong. Either that or maybe McMahon... It, maybe... Who knows? Maybe the mystery behind it all is, you know, who knows? But if he did do it, at one point, he was a nice guy. He screws loose. Whatever the reason, his reasoning was. Um, but, yeah. Uh, also, uh, did you ever meet Eddie Guerrero? I forget. No, I didn't meet Eddie Guerrero, but uh, Eddie Guerrero was the guy that we, we enjoyed watching res wrestle. Right now, Randy Randy Orton and Batista are both double teaming Daniel Bryan. How's that sound? Gay. Yeah, pretty gay. <laughs> pretty gay. So uh, again, nothing wrong with that. It was just a couple of couple of heterosexual dudes <laughs> bonding through watching mostly naked men. Uh, roll around on the, a wrestling mat with each other, uh, pretending to be competing and hurting each other. So, uh, with that, uh, so anyways, not too long after Mike, uh, uh, well, I mean, not too long before Mike retired was when I, when did you retire wrestling? 2009, 2010. Okay. Round about when he retired was when I started. Wow, that hurt. That hurts. They just did a move where, uh, yeah, they really hurt themselves. You're going to have to watch WrestleMania and find out because McMahon will find me and kill me. The, uh, right around then, I started doing stand-up comedy. Uh, uh, again, some of the parallels being that uh, I, I, Mike had to retire from something that he really enjoyed doing because it hurt him way too much. On the other hand, uh, you, you, people who retire from stand-up comedy do so. Uh, I don't know why, uh, but because really you can do it and be horrible at it and even make a living at it being horrible, but uh, you, you don't have to injure yourself, you know, whatever. But I guess people get sick of show business, all that kind of stuff, but uh, there's no injuries in, uh, except mental, psychological injuries. There's no injuries in, in, in uh, stand-up comedy. Except I, I did get injured in stand-up comedy when I was talking shit to a, uh, another comedian, or aspiring comedian, I should say, who has a uh, checkered past, a little bit of a thug, 
Uh, I was drunk, heckling a comedian, uh, for, for trying to help him. I was saying, you're surfing against the wind, choosing material. He was using material that I think he was just trying to be shocking, and it wasn't working. And uh, I was drunk and heckling him from uh, uh, at the open mic. And then when the guy confronted me outside uh, about it, another comedian decided to intervene, at which point I'm pretty sure I told him, you know what, if I were you, I would quit comedy and focus on just being a good dad. And uh, that's the point at which he shoved me. I injured my wrist. So in a way, I'm kind of like a wrestler of comedy. I mean, I kind of, you know, I took bumps too for comedy. But uh, looks like they're bringing out the stretcher. Somebody got really, really hurt. They're bringing out a stretcher now. This is this is good. They're selling the stretcher shit here. This goes back, harkens back to uh, Saturday night's main main event when I uh, watched Hulk Hogan get body slammed by King Kong Bundy, uh, Don Morocco holding him. And it was the first time where they ever had an ambulance uh, take uh, Hogan out. And they made it all seem like, oh, something real was going on. It was all bullshit. And it was set up to WrestleMania 3, I believe. That was with uh, Hulk Hogan and King Kong Bunny in a cage match. Here we are, 30 years later. None the fucking wiser. You know, this, this is this is really, you know, it's one thing. I didn't ever, I mean, the funny thing is, when we were a kid, you knew wrestling was fixed. No matter, I mean, I, I did when I first saw it. I enjoyed watching wrestling because I knew it was, I knew these guys weren't really actually hitting, each, or I mean, they were hitting each other. They weren't actually, you could tell when somebody's really trying to beat each other up. It looks way more desperate. It's it's a lot. It's way more boring. These guys were trying to appear to look like they're trying. They're they're trying to make it look fancier and and more uh, elaborate than it really is. They call it selling. They're trying to sell the the match. Um, but the fact is, I could tell they're still hurting each other. They're beating the crap out of themselves in many respects. They're helping each other beat the crap out of themselves. It intrigues the hell out of me, the fact that they do this for a spectacle that they know the outcome of. Or even if they don't up until the very end, they know that they're doing this. Okay, so now Daniel Bryan is being call, hauled off. They're trying to give us the impression he, he's, really, he's coming back. He's coming back to win this. It is not going to be Randy Orton or Batista. They're, they're please really... Don't, please don't. No, that's... Dude, they got another 20 minutes to sell. Yep. He's going to be coming back after whatever he's... This is wow! That was pretty good uh, DDT to the concrete there, yep. padded concrete, mind you. This is not hardcore, real concrete. This is padded. It still hurts. Um, oh, there he is, Daniel Bryan shoving off the uh, the all paramedics. Hurts. Here we go. It all hurts. That's what Mike was saying. It's all. It all hurts. Even the thumb to the eye, the vicious thumb to the eyes. Because that looks kind of. Sometimes. I mean, it looks looks kind. Of, I mean, sometimes you might actually get the thumb to the eye. And sometimes my favorite time of watching a, a, a move that really Tito Santana on somebody or whatever went to strike somebody, slammed his foot on the ground to punch somebody. He had about this much space between him and his opponent's head and his opponent's head still went back and fell back. It was a dolomite punch. I call that a dolomite punch because if you watch dolomite, the, the movie, uh, there's a lot of kicks and punches that don't exactly don't exactly land. Actually, it was bad exploitation, not black exploitation, because that was there's black exploitation where the movies are decent. Dolomite was a very low budget, almost a comedic black black exploitation movie, but it was still hilarious and it was still uh, pretty fun to watch. It's one of those movies where you see the boom mic pop in and they they didn't have the budget to reshoot it. Um, yeah. Um, so so yeah, I think I've done a lot of the explaining. Uh, I, when I was in, uh, uh, if I were a wrestler, I've been, I was, um, our friend Lee Froman said, if I was ever a wrestler, my wrestling name would be The Explainer. This episode of In the Meantime, I think, demonstrates why. Uh, my friend Mike still refers to me as The Explainer. When I am a rap artist, I use the rap name Dave The Explainer. The reason being... I, uh, according to my friend uh, Lee Froman, I would not have to lay a hand on my opponent. I would basically all I'd have to do is talk and not shut up, and my opponent will tap out from just not wanting to hear me talk anymore. You tell me if that's true. I, I okay. You're the one watching this, so so this is a uh, this has been a good interview with Mike, uh, as you can tell. Uh, he's you know again a guy you know. Sorry, man. No, so really, sorry. I knew what I was. Trust me, I knew what I was getting into. That's why I called this in the meantime, 
WrestleMania edition. I didn't call this in the meantime Shooter Silva or Mike or whatever the, the thing was. I was, you know, this is this is the WrestleMania edition. Okay? So uh, WrestleMania 30 in particular. So that's I, I really do hope that Vince you know, but hey, if Vince McMahon wants to come track me down, I'll just blow that. I'll try to tweet that shit or who knows? All this bullshit with the Twitterverse, the Facebook and the social media, it's really unhealthy. Um, but then again, we're 37, 38 year olds watching wrestling. How are you looking forward to the uh, 20 year reunion of our high school reunion, man? Should be fun. Should, should be fun. This is a guy, again, who went into independent study and didn't even go to fucking high school halfway through it. He's going to the reunion. Yeah. Right on. Right on. Good. Good. To, yeah. You think you're gonna get laid? No. No. I think I don't. I don't think our odds are we're gonna. Get, there's no way, really. We didn't. We didn't have a high. Nothing. Have you seen some of them? I've, yes. There's some attractive ones. There's some that you know. They're moms. You know. There's mom. Women grow. You know. Hey, women are women. Uh, uh, there's some actually. There was one. I'm not gonna say who because some of these. Some of our high school friends might actually watch this now that I've. They've added me on Facebook now. You know, being the, the comedian and all, they still, there's some people that have added me on there. Uh, I saw my old junior high school uh, dance, yeah, the, my junior high dance photo uh, that I took with my high school, or my junior high crush and her best friend at the Christmas dance. Uh, as my friend said at the time, I looked like a, a technical pimp because uh, I had two women on either of my shoulder and I'm sitting there with my little child smile. Was the happiest I've seen in a photo of, that I, of myself in a while, <laughs> but uh, I really took that little mullet head through the fucking ringer as I've, I've looked at that photo, and I'm like, wow, uh, that's the little kid I used to be, and here I am, you know, 20, 20 years plus in in, in addiction, uh, very bad decisions, bad relationships, um, all kinds of stuff, all culminating in. Being 37 years old watching WrestleMania, so it's not that sad though. It's, it's actually I'm I'm really enjoying today. This has been a good day. Uh, again, had some good food. Had to wake up Mike twice after getting the itis uh, to remind him that he paid seventy dollars to watch this, and uh, it's probably not a good idea to uh, what bullshit bullshit what seventy dollars. He's going to WrestleMania live next year. He just told me that right. it's on his birthday. He just said damn right. Okay, so right now, oh, there it is. Daniel Bryan won. He just made Batista tap out. Daniel wow, Bryan is the winner. I, t I knew, dude, was, and they got the 10 minutes left of celebration. Yeah. They're going to do all the, you know, now everybody's yes, yes, yes. -ing. Like when they put Ben Wabi over. Yeah, when they, yeah ben, Chris Benoit before he became murderer was a heavyweight champion at one time in, in uh, WrestleMania 25. Am I not mistaken? Was that 20? 20. That's made 20. And uh, he, he won the heavyweight championship. And lost it not too long after that because, as they learned, he is horrible on the mic, much like my my buddy Mike is. Sort of, the, he's the Chris Benoit of BTW. Only he hasn't murdered his family. You don't have a family. Sure. Well, I guess you could say you have murdered your family because he jerks off a lot. <laughs> and those sperm die. Oh, yeah. You know no, what I'm saying? Yeah, like that's bad. Yeah. You know, hey, you know, a little every time, a little Benoit, you know, wow. choking your family. Wow. So. Um, Wow. Hey, what? Wow. What are you talking about? I'm a comedian, man. I can make these kinds of, you know, I can make horrible jokes like that. You know, that's like, you know, a, a thing about, the thing that's interesting about wrestlers versus comedians, um, it still takes quite a bit to be a hack wrestler. Uh, hack comedians, good or bad, uh, uh, not as respected. Hack wrestlers, they still have to take some bumps. They, they may not, you know, there may be certain respect. There, there's, there's rules, there's codes, there's all that kind of stuff. Working stiff means that somebody really beats the crap out of you a little bit real, more realistically than somebody who uh, is easier to work. Well, I don't know what the we term. hit people very hard in safe places. They hit people very hard in safe places. That's what he was saying. You really got to speak up. For a wrestler, you're very soft-spoken. Maybe that, you know, should have spoken up more. You know, little CM Punk. In your, uh, in your in your repertoire, you know, a little big mouthy, you know. I always said if you took if you took my my mind, my psychology, and and big mouth, and you put it with his in ring ability, you'd have quite the wrestler. Unfortunately, uh, no. Yeah, and I was not. I did not want to be a manager 
because you still have to pay two, three, four thousand dollars to go to wrestling school to be a manager. Fuck that shit. Who are these? His daughters? What are those? Ex-wife and a daughter, sister. No, because he's gonna be married. Uh, oh, he's got family. That's right. So he's got family. So it's probably his sister and his and his ne his niece. So he, they're in the ring. His family. Uh, the Daniel Bryan won. Everybody's happy now. Happy ending. Again, Undertaker. I'm, we're gonna spoilers. So if anybody's watching WrestleMania after WrestleMania Day, you're fucked. <laughs> Dave Grimes will be happy about this. Dave Grimes, the second yeah. comedian. Who uh, Mike actually wrestled in? Uh, in was it BTW that you did that match, or was it I don't the think same? We ever did an actual match. We just he said, it, "No, he said your first, his first time wrestling was you." Oh, Jesus, a long time ago. Jesus Christ, this guy! Yeah, weed doesn't kill braid cells. Kids. <laughs> uh, uh, Mike uh, wrestled Dave Grimes the second, who's a comedian now, new comedian. Uh, he's getting better. Um, a friend of mine, though. Lives out in Santa Cruz, and he went by the wrestling name Perry Von Vicious. Uh, and he wrestled Shooter Silva in his first match. I don't know if that was for Big Time Wrestling or for the Santa Cruz it's promotion. Was for big time wrestling. It was for Big Time Wrestling. So, and um, and then also they have a he. There's a girl that Mike helped train, who is in NXT, who is being primed to possibly become a WWE superstar at one time. That's Bailey. Bailey. That's her name. So you'll learn about that. If you see Bailey for wrestling fans, Mike's worked with her. Uh, Mike also uh, got to see the great Kali. The great Kali, who is in wrestling, who is also uh, in Mike's category of the shits, is a giant Indian man. Uh, you know that, don't tell me. What? <laughs> He's not going to see this. But the great Kali, uh, he was in the movie The Longest Yard. You might recognize the giant uh, Indian dude who can't very speak very well. That's the great Kali. He always needs subtitles, uh, and he speaks English. He um, he used to wrestle out here at APW, All Pro Wrestling, and actually, uh, from what I understand, he killed a guy accidentally, correct? He killed somebody, broke his neck. Uh, and not only that, another weird thing, I used to work as a video game tester. One of the video game testers that worked in my department over at Sony used to, was one of these wrestlers at APW, and actually brought the great Kali in to work overtime. Uh, great Kali wasn't working there, he was just hanging out. But nobody's going to tell the great Kali he can't do anything. And I was uh, when my friends described to me a giant person who came into the department whose hands were as big as our head, uh, when I saw the movie The Longest Yard, I had a feeling I knew who it was. He also went into wrestling. Pointed out, yes, the great Kali was him. Uh, yeah. So a little more of those six degrees of facts and shit that hopefully you care about. Uh, coincidentally, the, last, the comedian who was on my last tube cast of In the Meantime, Charles Kelly, also trained in wrestling school. You can watch that fucking episode and find out more about Charles Kelly uh, from Baltimore. Who uh, He was going to actually go by the name Jason, wasn't Jason, Jason Moore. If he became a wrestler, he was going to use the name Jason Moore because he had this whole gimmick thought of more, 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 you know, and, you know, but he didn't become a wrestler. He became a comedian. Again, that's the end of uh, WrestleMania. I want to thank Mike for ordering WrestleMania, for uh, letting me narrate his existence in, for the audience over here, basically talking through the main event. Uh, I want. Could we rewind and watch the Divas match again? Because uh, I was talking mostly. I want. I wouldn't mind watching all the all the all the girls yeah. again beat the crap out of each other. Because he's got a DVR. So it's been Who great. Who doesn't have a DVR? What? Who the fuck doesn't have? That's not. I don't care. That's not. That's not. See now, Mike. What? These are the kinds of things, Mike. This is again. He gets hung up on on tedious. You know, what do you call it? De not details, but uh, what do they call? It? Um, semantics. That's what the word is. You should have been the semanticator. That's what you know. The semanticator. Always worried about semantics so much that he then would. You know, he could be a heel. A heel in wrestling terms is a bad guy. Face is the good guy, a baby face. Uh, Mike was a face. I was always looking forward to the point at which he could turn heel, but that never happened because Mike can't wrestle anymore. Um, I mean, he could. He would just be injuring himself and ruining his, his job prospects. That's not something he's going to do. See? So, like I said, Mike was the guy who uh, who was not the favorite, not a good student. Well, I wouldn't say not a good student. He was... he. 
he applied what he, he knew to uh, uh, be smart in life. Me, I was a straight-A student, dropped out of college in my uh, first year, and currently am unemployed and an aspiring comedian with uh, very little to no money coming in in comedy. So again, kids, stay off drugs. Um, beyond that, uh, again, I'm going to enjoy this Divas match without you guys. Sorry. Uh, thank you for watching this in the meantime, WrestleMania edition. Uh, hopefully you check it out. Uh, like the In the Meantime with Mean Dave fan page on you or on Facebook if you like. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. That's uh, youtube.com slash user slash the explainer. That's T-H-E-E explainer. You can find me on there. If, you'll, if you're watching this, just subscribe to the goddamn thing. Because there'll be all kinds of other content. Where I'll be, I'm getting more into this shit. All right? And also, you'll not you'll notice I don't put any editing into any of this stuff because I'm lazy. Uh, also, I'm tired of all this high-end, all, all this stuff pandering to you, the audience. This is simple. One shot, one, one take, in real time, very simple gimmicks. Oh, I mean, whatever. Not even gimmicks. We don't even we can't even afford gimmicks. Vicky Guerrero screaming. Thank you for watching. In the meantime, with me and Dave, WrestleMania edition. Uh, also, yeah, add me on Facebook if you haven't already, or don't. Uh, like, stand, go see live stand-up comedy if you can, or don't. But if you do and you don't enjoy it, make sure you tell somebody that you don't enjoy it because they need to know to get better. And a lot of bad comedians out there are surviving off of uh, people encouraging them who probably shouldn't be encouraging them. They're really not as good as you think. And uh, I had a lot of people tell me I wasn't so good when I started and had to work that around. Now people are telling me, hey, you should really keep doing that kind of thing. And uh, I, that, I don't listen to them. I listen to my own gut instincts. It's like being a shitty wrestler who uh, thinks that he's really better than he is. Like John Cena. Okay? Talking about you, Cena. You're not a good wrestler. And really... And he's not he, John Cena, the shits. So, that being said, we'll catch you next week. In the meantime, have a great fucking evening, folks.